games. The only thing giving me life in this miserable experience we call life. Life sucks. But what exactly makes them so addictingly good? I need to go touch grass. Game design, that's what. Hello there, everyone. It's your favorite and only host from the, uh... Um, uh... Let me just check my... Uh... Uh, hmm. Something. I mean, uh, the, uh. Ah, yes. The, uh, Boy Talks About Things podcast. Yeah, I, I guess that works. Uh, <clears throat> anyways, uh, what exactly is game design, anyway? Game design is basically the creation and shaping of a game's mechanics, systems, and rules to make it, well, a game. Now, you may be wondering. What's so important about game design? Well, let me show you. Now, good game design is the kind of stuff that makes you want to spend every single waking hour of the day playing. You know, the kind of game that makes you think about it all day and night that you literally can't live without. Basically, the kind of game that makes hard drugs look moderately safe. Now, bad game design, on the other hand, makes you feel like a big, dumb, stupid, idiot moron for even coming up with the idea of buying it, let alone actually paying money for it. Ugh. You better pray that you can still refund the piece of garbage you have just exchanged currency for, or else, well, whoever made it will get like a fat payday of like 10 bucks or even cheaper, I don't know. Alright, I think we're done with everything about game design, so let's get on to the game design of one of my favorite games, Dave. <laughs> So Deus Ex is an immersive sim role-playing game released in 2001 and Pardon me, but what exactly is an immersive sim? Well, an immersive sim game is the kind of game that aims to fully immerse players in what feels like a living world. You may wonder, how exactly does a game try to be immersive? Well, let me just give you an example. Whenever you see a window in a game nowadays, it's usually just some decoration with no real gameplay purpose, you know? But in an immersive sim, a window is a new path for you to explore and maybe get to your objective more easily. Same goes with vents to a lesser extent. Another example is how whenever you run out of lockpicks for a locked container, you go... Oh man... But in Deus Ex, however, you can easily replace your lockpicks with high-grade explosives. <laughs> and there's so many other ways a game can immerse you into its world. But let's get back to Deus Ex. What even is it about anyways? By the way, spoiler warning, just in case you actually want to buy and experience this game. Well, Deus Ex is about a nano-augmented agent codenamed JC Denton, who works for UNETCO, an agency whose mission is to combat terrorism, of which JC then defects from and joins the many insurgencies against the UN, who are secretly part of the secret organization Majestic 12, which was originally a part of the Illuminati which is now in ruins because of the actions of the leader of Majestic 12, Bob Page. But surely, just dumping all the info about the plot wouldn't get you interested in Deus Ex. So let's see how Deus Ex introduces you to his gameplay and setting in the first mission, Liberty Island. So you start off in the southern docks of Liberty Island, and just in case for you people who aren't freedom-loving, gun-loving, and god freedom Americans, Liberty Island is the island where the Statue of Liberty was built and subsequently bombed by the French. So after you flounder around a bit, your brother Paul Denton will give you a choice of weapons to choose, which are a sniper rifle for long range sniping, or a crossbow for silent takedowns, or the correct choice. The rocket launcher, yeah you know this thing is awesome. So now that you are armed with a weapon of mass destruction, you are now ready for your main objective, which is to get to the commander of the National Secessionist Forces on top of the Statue of Liberty, and either talk to him to learn of his schemes or... But before you can enact justice, you have to get to him first, of which there are many ways. You can either just enter straight from the front doors and murder every single person who dares to oppose your goal. Or you can go in all sneakily, avoiding enemy sightlines, sneaking past security and all the way to the top to pacify your target. Or you can even go to the back entrance by climbing on top of a bunch of cargo containers and skip the heavily defended base of the statue. And quickly get to the top to actually listen to what he has to say. What? 
You think I was gonna murder him again? You psychopath. But wait, there's a downside to this uh, not really that secret route. Talking to the commander wasn't your only objective. You also have to go and rescue your co-worker Gunter Herman, another augmented agent, and he's located all the way beneath the base. So if you want to take the easy way, you're gonna have to leave your colleague behind with all the terrorists, which isn't that big of a deal, right? Wrong! You see, in this game, there are consequences for your actions, and if you were to say, leave him in a prison to rot, well, uh, he won't be so happy to see you. Excuse us that I have forgotten your brother Paul Denton and the infinite power of nano-augmentation. And in fact, he'll have this hatred for you until you have to confront him when he tries to stop you from opposing Majestic 12. In this way, the game gives you three viable options for you to complete your objective, all of which have their own downsides and upsides. And this freedom of choice and creativity is what makes a game like Deus Ex truly an amazing game. But I'm not done yet! Every mission in Deus Ex isn't just a linear puzzle solving game with added violence. Every single mission in Deus Ex is completely open and allows you to explore every single nook and cranny for some extra supplies and even augments which are like powers you can use to your advantage in combat, stealth, or mobility. For example, on the east side of the island, there is a bunker which contains the first weapon modifications in the game. One of them being the laser sight which basically gives your weapons 100% accuracy because as we all know, bullets are attracted to lasers because they're cool. And another example of how the game rewards you for exploration is at the Northern Docks, where you can find both an informant that gives you a key for the statue doors and a sunken ship that has a bunch of cool loot like a sawed off shotgun, which in this game uh, kinda sucks to be honest. But you also find an accuracy weapon mod which makes the aiming reticule take less time to get 100% accuracy. But that brings me to another way the game incentivizes you to explore. The skill point system. So in Deus Ex, whenever you complete an objective or find some secret location, you'll get skill points and you may wonder, what exactly do skill points do? Well, it's in the name, you spend skills on them, duh. In Deus Ex, pretty much everything you do is a skill. Killing people? That's a skill. Lock picking? That's a skill. Stealth? That's not a skill, you just have to get good, nerd. And combat in particular is heavily reliant on skills because in most other games, when you shoot somebody, the bullet usually goes to the crosshair on screen and in Deus Ex, it kind of works in the same way. But before it can be fully accurate, you have to wait 70 freaking years just for the crosshair to shrink into the smallest size, which makes combat more about waiting than actual action unless you dump lots of points into it which makes weapons do more damage and makes the weapon more accurate. You may think that this just makes the game boring and unfun, but remember, violence is not the only solution, despite my many attempts to promote it. And in fact, you can beat this entire game without killing a single person. And that is through learning and exploiting this game's stealth mechanics, which, well, at the time this was made was uh, alright, I guess, and... Uh, you know what, I might as well just show you a theatrical reenactment of this game's stealth. I think that about concludes everything I have to say about Deus Ex. And that concludes this podcast. Oh, come on! I mean, what other incredible game can I talk about now? I mean, what game have I played the most? Hold on, let me check. Ah. Yeah, you know what? I think this could work. Okay, so that does not conclude my podcast. In fact, we're only at the halfway point of this whole damn thing. So now, let's talk about my other favorite game of all time. Now, Fallout is a much more mainstream franchise than Deus Ex. But just in case you don't know what it is, it's basically an open world RPG game that takes place in a post-apocalyptic America. And the plot of New Vegas is really quite simple. You see, this guy, Benny, stole a thing you needed to deliver as a post-apocalyptic UPS worker and also shot you in the face. So now you have to find him and return the favor. And that's about it. 
So when you first begin the game, you wake up in Doc Mitchell's house, where he had somehow cured you of your lead in your head, itis. And then he tells you to go to the vending machine looking thingy in the room, which looks like if I put a coin in, a can of Pepsi would fall out. But instead, it allows you to choose your special stats, which are a staple of the Fallout series, with every single game having them, starting with Fallout 1 back in 1998. So what do these stats do anyway? Well, let me tell you. Strength is the stat that determines your carry weight, melee damage, and your ability to handle heavy weaponry. It also determines the starting amount of your melee skill. Perception is the stat that determines the range your compass can detect entities. And yes, you have a compass in this game. It also determines the accuracy of your ranged weaponry and the starting amount of your explosives, energy weapons, and lockpicking skills. Endurance is the stat that determines the amount of hit points you have and the starting amount of your unarmed and survival skills. Charisma affects your companion nerve, which is basically how hard your companions will fight for you. It also affects your barter and speech skills and, uh, well, uh, nothing else really. This stat kinda sucks. Uh, just drop it down to one for some more points to put in a better stat. Intelligence, on the other hand, is absolutely excellent, as it determines the amount of skill points you get. And yes, it's just like Deus Ex, but now, you only get skill points when you level up by getting XP from quests, or my favorite pastime, murder! Oh yeah, and it affects the starting amount of your science, repair, and medicine stats. Now agility is the stat that affects your action point amount, the speed of your reloading and drawing, and the starting amount of your gun and sneak skills. And last but not least, luck, which influences all your skills, and determines your critical rate, the random chance of the game, and your ability to win at gambling. All of these stats are the core attributes to your character, and if you look at them all together, you'll notice that they form the acronym SPECIAL. Isn't that neat? So now that we're done with deciding our stats, Doc Mitchell tells us to go and sit on his couch to do a little personality quiz, and even do a Rorschach inkblot test before he surprises you with the fact that you are actually secretly deciding your stats, which is a pretty cool way to pick which skill you want to give a bonus to. So now I'll just let my secondary host, Gnushk the Caveman, to give an extremely brief description for every skill. Miller weapon, let you smack people good. Anarm, let you smack people with fist good. Guns, let you shoot good. Energy weapons, let you laser good. Explosives, let you go boom. Lock picking, let you lock pick good. Survival, let you live good and also make numbers. Science, let you do robots and chemistry and also make stuff. Repair, let you repair good and make stuff. Medicine, let you do drugs. Barter, let you sell and buy good. Sneak, let you sneak good. Speech, let you speak good. Thank you, Kanushka, for your excellent description of these skills. So anyways, now that you're done with picking your tag skills, you can finally pick a trait. <laughs> when am I done with character creation? <sighs> okay, just calm down. I can get through this, okay? <clears throat> now, you have to pick your traits, which you can choose between two of them or none of them because all traits come with a downside. For example, Built to Destroy, which is a trait that allows you to gain 3% more critical chance, which is pretty much the equivalent of 3 extra points in luck at the cost of your weapon degrading 15% faster, which is quite a downside. Another example, the Small Frame trait gives you an additional point to agility at the cost of your entire body being more easily crippled. So with that, we are finally done with character creation, and Doc Mitchell escorts us out of his house. But before that, I make sure to ransack his entire house for valuables and or things that I can use to commit war crimes with. Because this man, no, Saint, gives all of his possessions to you out of the sheer kindness of his heart. So now that we're done with looting the house, Doc Mitchell gives us a Pip-Boy, yet another staple of the series, used in pretty much every game as a tool to display your stats and items. He also tells us to go to someone named Sunny Smiles for some survival training. And after that, we head out and see the beautiful Nevada desert. Wow, this sucks! Technically, we are now free to go and find a dude that gave us that lead in the head itis and get some payback. 
but let's hear Doc Mitchell out. I mean, we did rob him of all of his stuff, so the least we could do is follow his advice and head to the Prospector Saloon to meet this sunny person he was going on about. The instant we step into the saloon, Sunny instantly greets us and we have a bunch of dialogue options to choose from but I'll just get to the point and ask for some survival training. She then teaches us the basics of surviving in the wasteland, shooting bottles and then oversized lizards and picking up weeds and random plants to cook into medicine. And although I don't have the medical license needed to say so, I can 100% assure you that that stuff is med- Anyways, after we're done with the tutorial, Sunny tells us to go meet Trudy, the saloon's owner. And inside is where we find Trudy and another man named Joe Cobb, who is a part of the Powder Gangers, a group of escaped convicts, arguing about a traitor named Ringo and our very first two quest. Why two, you may ask? Well, considering how free you are to do anything in this game, the quests in this game similarly gives you the freedom of how to complete quests in many ways including the side you pick to help in the quest. For this quest, we have to pick between helping the powder gangers and taking over Good Springs, the town which we are currently residing in, or the people of Good Springs, to defend their town from criminals. And being a lawful man myself, I knew exactly which side to pick. So now, we are being tasked by Joe Cobb to go and settle a score with that traitor Ringo, who's in the gas station right next to Doc Mitchell's house. So after committing some unnecessary violence, Joe Cobb now tells us to go and gather supplies from Doc Mitchell and Chet, the shopkeeper of the general store. We are also introduced to another pivotal element of New Vegas, the speech checks. So during dialogue with Chet, you'll see a skill requirement next to one of the dialogue options which allow you to pick an answer that will bring you additional benefits like extra pay for a job, extra ammo, or even to convince somebody not to fight you. But if you don't have enough of that skill to pass the check, you'll fail the check and pick a horrible answer, which might cause the NPCs you're talking to to get hostile, especially if you're convincing them to not turn you from an organism to just organs. But even so, this gives every single skill in the game an opportunity to change the outcome of a quest, and even the plot if you do speech checks during the main quest, which I'll get to later. So now that you've attempted to get some supplies from Shed and Doc Mitchell, you can go back to Joe Cobb to start the attack and easily wipe out all the townsfolk with the pay-to-win grenade launcher that you have conveniently spawned with. And after all the townsfolk are dead, Joe Cobb rewards you with reputation for the Powder Gangers faction, which is alright and all, but I mean, reputation can also be used in speech checks too, but like, eh, you know what, I regret my choice. So now that we've committed mass murder, we have to go back to the main objective, which is... And he's located at New Vegas, as he is the chairman of the Topps Casino in New Vegas. And because New Vegas is the largest and coolest place in the entire game. And to get there, we can take two ways. The shorter western route, or the eastern longer route. And obviously, we've got no time to lose, so we're gonna head that way. But there's one problem. A whole lot of wasps are infesting the western road. But surely that's nothing, right? I mean, what can a bunch of bugs do to me? Okay, yeah, never mind. Those things are the spawn of Satan. I'm never going there ever again. You see that? That's game design at work right there. You see, the developers put all the murderous death hornets from hell there to dissuade the players from going there, and instead to go through the longer route that has a whole bunch of cool quests you can do, like helping a bunch of cancer people to go to the moon and de-escalating a conflict between the NCR and the friends of Benny. And after that wild chase, we finally make it to New Vegas and finally get the chance to annex some karmic justice. That felt good. Oh yeah, I forgot I was making a video. Uh, so, so after that, uh, some guys will come up to you and ask you to join them, and that will take you to the second act of the main story because defying death and enacting revenge wasn't a cool enough story for this game. 
So apparently, the thing that Benny stole was essential to the plans of one Mr. Robert House to upgrade his robot army from normal foot soldiers to explosive launching death machines. But that's not all. Every single major faction wants to control the Hoover Dam, which is the major power source for the city of New Vegas. And everyone wants to fight tooth and nail over it as having uncontested control of the dam basically lets the faction who owns it take control of the entire area. And of the factions fighting for the dam are the New California Republic, the largest nation in the entire wasteland, who want to restore America back to before the war happened, who need the dam to acquire control of the new state in its nation. Another faction fighting for the dam is Robert House himself, who needs the dam to keep New Vegas running, and wants to rebuild America anew, and not repeat the mistakes of the past which caused the war in the first place. Yet another faction fighting for the dam is Caesar's Legion, a newly established nation of strong warriors who imitate the culture and society of the ancient Romans and want the dam to expand their territory and gain influence over the wasteland, whose leader, Caesar, real name Edward Sallow, believes in order through fear and barbaric acts, as in a lawless wasteland, old world tendencies are irrelevant. And whoever you side with depends on your own worldviews, and not as a character as a game, but as a real person. And the best faction that will bring the most promising future to the wasteland is all dependent on your thoughts, opinions, and your beliefs, of which you hold to the highest of standards. And that is what truly makes this game incredible. And it's no wonder how I've spent more than 300 hours playing this absolute masterpiece of a game. And I believe that this is a fitting end of this ep for this episode of... Wait, what did I call this again?